All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to be talking about section 11.1. .1. So in sections 10.1 .1 and 10.2, we talked about how to do confidence intervals when you're dealing with means. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to do significance tests with means. So it says, uh, it's recommended that teenagers get eight hours of sleep a night. Mrs. Gallus believes that her AP stat students are getting less than eight re uh, the recommended eight hours of sleep per night. To test her belief, take a random sample of 10 students in class and record the number of hours of sleep for each. Do these data provide convincing evidence that the AP STAT students get less than 8 hours of sleep per night using alpha equaling 0.05? So obviously we don't have a, a full classroom here. Um, but let's just say, for example, you took a random sample of 10 students. Okay. So in our sample, we had... Uh, numbers 6.5 so this person got six and a half hours of sleep um, this person got 4.75 another person got five another person got eight seven seven point two five uh four point five five point five uh seven and six so random sample of ten people so my sample size is 10. Let's say I average these together and I got an average of 6.15. And a standard deviation in this case would be uh, 1.19. So here are my numbers. And it says state the appropriate hypotheses for a significance test. Be sure to define the parameter of interest. So our null usually says like two things or one thing like everything's normal, right? So it's recommended that students get eight hours of sleep. So we're going to assume that our population standard, our uh, population mean is eight. Now, Ms. Gallus believes that it's actually less than that. So our alternative would be mu is less than eight. All right. Now, we can't just write that as our uh, hypotheses. We need to tell everybody what mu represents. So in this case, mu represents the true mean hours of sleep uh, for Miss G's AP STAT students. So true mean hours of sleep for Mrs. G's AP STAT students. Now, it says what condition must be met. Check them. So first off, it needs to be random. Okay, so we assume that we randomly sampled 10 students, right? So random sample of 10 students. Okay, so that one's good. Uh, next, we need to do 10% rule. All right, so it's safe to assume Ms. Gallus teaches AP Stat all day. She's probably got about 150 or so students, 120 to 150 students. So it's safe to assume that 10 is less than 10% of all Ms. G's students. Okay, all of our AP staff students. All right, and then uh, normal. All right, so it didn't tell us that the population distribution is normal. We don't have at least 30 people, so the only option left we have is to show that the sample is no strong skewness or outliers. So if I create a number line here, make a dot plot, I had numbers ranging all the way from like four and a half or four. Let's see here. I had numbers ranging from 4.5 up to 8. So I'm going to create a number line here that goes 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I'm just putting a dot for each student. So right there, kind of like this. All 
All right, so these are our hours of sleep. Okay, and you can kind of see that it's not really skewed. So there's no strong skewness or outliers. So I'm just gonna say sample shows no strong skewness. or outliers. Okay, so that one's good. So since we've already met all three conditions, now we can move on. So it says give the formulas for the mean and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of X bar and calculate the values. So mu sub X bar, that's just whatever we assume the true mean to be. So in this case, it's gonna be eight. And now the standard deviation of X bar, well, that would be the population standard deviation divided by the square root of N. But we don't know what that is, so we can replace that with S sub X. All right, so if we do that, we're gonna get standard deviation of 1.19 divided by the square root of 10. So when you do that, we're going to get a standard deviation of point zero point three seven six. So this is our standard deviation, and then eight is our mean. Now it says draw a picture, then calculate the test statistic. Okay, so if I drew a picture, okay, remember this is a t distribution. Okay, so in the middle here, I'm going to have eight. And now for our sample, our sample, we actually got 6.15, which is down here, right? Here's 6.15. And we're trying to calculate what percentage or what are the odds of getting 6.15 or less. Only other thing we need to do, we need to show T and our degrees of freedom. Okay, so this is our name for this graph. Okay, you always have to have T and then your DF, whatever that might be, all right? And so if I calculate my test statistic, remember T is equal to X bar minus mu divided by SX over root N. So we're going to have 6.15 minus 8 divided by... Uh, point zero point three seven six. We calculated th calculated that on question four, and we're going to get a test statistic of negative four point nine two. So this is our t test statistic. Okay. Now. It says, remember, since we are working with means, the test statistic is a T value, so we can use B to find the P value. So you can use B or you can use your calculator, okay? If you want to do a uh, calculator, it is TCDF, all right? And now you're going to have a lower P value, or sorry, lower T. You're going to have an upper T, and you're going to have a DF. All right, so lower T. You see how we're measuring everything at 6.15 and below. That, doesn't, that means that you don't have a lower bound. You're just going as low as you possibly can. So I'm going to substitute negative 9999 as my lower T. My upper T, I want to measure everything at 6.15 and below. So my upper T is going to be 6.15. And my degrees of freedom, like we said, was going to be 9. So if I plug all of this in my calculator, I'm going to get a p-value of 0 0.0004. So a really low p-value here. And so it says, what conclusion can we make? So p-value is really small, right? So I'm going to say, since our p-value is small, it 
and in parentheses, I'm going to put p-value equals 0 0.0004, which is less than our significance level of 0 0.05. Uh, I'm going to say we reject the null. Okay. In other words, we do have convincing evidence that uh, Mrs. Gollis's or Mrs. G's AP Stat students get less than eight hours of sleep per night on average. Okay, so since our p-value is small, uh, we reject the null. We do have convincing evidence that Mrs. G's AP status students get less than eight hours of sleep per night on average. All right, so important ideas. All right, this is, these are bullet points number eight and nine on your front page. Um, so number eight are your conditions. All right, so still the same conditions that we've always been doing, okay? So random, you got to show 10% rule, and you got to do normal slash large counts, right? Okay, remember in the normal section, you can show uh, population is appro approximately normal. So population distribution is approximately normal. You can show um, that your sample n is greater than or equal to 30, which that's your central limit theorem. Or you can show that the sample distribution shows no strong skewness or outliers. Okay. All right. And then number nine. So this would be your test statistic and your p-value. So first off, you have a graph, right? Okay, and the middle would be your mean, all right? And also, don't forget, you got to give it a name. So T and then DF, whatever your degrees of freedom are, all right? Your value, your test statistic, is just X bar minus mu divided by SX over root N. Okay, and then to find your p-value, you can do table B. Or you can do TCDF, okay, where inside you're going to have a lower T, an upper T, and your degrees of freedom. Okay, so those are the two bullet points. I'm going to leave the check your understanding for you. Um, you can check the key for your answers. Um, we're going to move on to page uh, 16 now. Okay, so it says, what is, a, uh, what is normal body temperature? Um, so it says, for many years, doctors have told people that normal body temperature is 98.6 um, degrees Fahrenheit. Today, we're going to try and find out if this is true. Now, normally, you would be able to take your body temperature, everybody record it, okay? Um, and then we'd be able to put it together as a class. Obviously, we can't do that since we're a virtual class, but... Um, for just the sake, just for the sake of purposes, let's say for example, we had a class mean of ninety-eight 
0.237, standard deviation of 0 0.882, or sorry, excuse me, 822, and a sample size of 32. All right, now it says, do the data provide convincing evidence that the mean normal body temperature is different than the doctor's claim? Assume conditions have been met. All right, so for the state section, my parameter, all right, so what is mu? Mu represents the true mean body temp of all high school students. True mean body temp of all high school students. All right, hypotheses, well, let's just assume they're true. Let's just assume it's accurate, that mu is equal to 98.6. But our goal here, okay, we're trying to determine if it's not equal to 98.6, okay? That is different. So the key word here is that um, we're trying to figure out if it is different Okay, if the body temp is different than what is claimed to be true, 98.6. So for our alternative, that's why we wrote is not equal to. Okay, if you ever see the word is different, that means not equal to. So statistic, our class sample was X bar equaling 98.237. And our significance level here is just going to be 0.05. So the name of the procedure, we have one sample, okay? So this is going to be a one sample uh, t-test, because we're doing a significance test, right? So t-test for mu. Uh, general formula, okay? So in words, it is test statistic equals statistic minus parameter divided by our standard deviation. And then for specific formula, we've got T is equal to X bar minus mu divided by SX over root N. So if I plug that stuff in, I'm going to get a... Uh, a um, test statistic of 98.237 minus 98.6 divided by 0 0.822 over square root of 32 for a test statistic of negative 2.50. Okay, so if I were to draw a picture, I'd have a picture that looks something like this. So I got my number line. Looks like that. And now in the middle, okay, um, I'm going to draw the standardized graph. So in the middle, I would have zero. And then over here, I have my test statistic of negative 2.5 or 2.50. Right now, I am doing a I am doing a significance test where my alternative hypothesis says mu is not equal to ninety eight point six. So when you're doing a significance test where it's not equal, you're actually doing what's known as a two sided test. Okay, so not only are we measuring everything below negative two point five. We're also measuring everything above positive 2.5, okay? And then the only other thing I need, T, and then my degrees of freedom. We had a sample size of 32, so my degrees of freedom is 31, okay? Now, remember, test statistic, we had T equals negative 2.5. So my P-value, I'm going to do TCDF. And I'm going to do negative 2.5, or excuse me, I'm measuring everything at and below negative 2.5. So my lower bound is going to be negative 9999 up to negative 2.5. My degrees of freedom is 31. 
So this is my lower T, my upper T, and my DF. And so if I do that, I'm going to get a p-value of 0 0.009. Now, that is for everything here at and below negative 2.5. But because I'm doing a two-sided test, I need to double that. Okay? So 0 0.009 times 2, because it's a two-sided test, I'm going to get 0 0.018. So my p-value in this case is 0 0.018. Um, now, conclusion. Two things I need in here. I need to interpret my p-value, and I made, need to make a conclusion. So interpreting the p-value, we always assume the null is true. Okay. So assuming... Assuming the null is true... Okay, so in parentheses, I'm putting mu is equal to 98.6. There is a 0 0.018, that was our p-value, uh, probability of getting um, an x-bar of 98.237 or lower or, okay, remember, because it's a two-sided test, so we have to do the other direction as well. So 98.237 or lower or 98.963 or higher by random chance. Okay, so this is interpreting the p-value. So interpret p-value. Okay, and then I can write a conclusion. So since our p-value is small, All right, so in parentheses, I'm going to put p-value equals 0 0.018, which is less than our significance level of 0 0.05. Um, I'm going to say we reject the null. And then we say we do have convincing evidence. that um, the true mean body temperature is different than the doctor's claim. The true mean body temp is different than the doctor's claim. Okay, so this is our conclusion. And now it says another class did the same exact, uh, same exact activity with these results. Um, so X bar is 97.9, standard deviation of 1.6, sample size is 30. It says use t-test on the calculator to find the p-value. So if you did this, you're going to have a p-value of 0.023, okay? Now, it says reject the null at 0.110, or sorry, reject the null at a significance level of 0.10, um, reject it at 0.05, reject it at 0.01, all right? So uh, if I were to reject it, would I reject it at 0.10? Yes, because it's less than 0.10. What about 0.05? Yes, because uh, 0.023 is smaller than that. What about 0.01? Well, no, you wouldn't, right? Because it's greater than 0.01.
Now use T interval on the calculator to find the following confidence intervals. So at a 90% confidence interval, you would have a confidence interval of 97.704 up to 83.396. Okay, so would you reject the null? Yes, because if you look, 98.6 uh, does not sit in this area. Sorry, let me fix this. This is supposed to say uh, 98.396. Okay, so 98.6 is not inside this interval, so you would reject the null, right? Uh, if you did a 95%, you would have a range from 97.303 up to 98.497. Would you reject it in this case? Yes, because again, 98.6 is not inside this interval. What about a 99% confidence interval? Well, that would be 97.095. Up to 98.705. Okay. Would you reject the null? No. And the reason is because 98.6 is inside this interval. So it's a plausible value. Now it says, what connection do you notice between your answers to number one and number two? Well, you'll notice that both on the t-test and the confidence interval, the results are going to be the same depending on the value. So a 95, or excuse me, a 90% confidence interval, you would reject the null. Same thing for a significance test where you are doing 10% significance level, all right? That's the same thing as 90% confidence interval, all right? Think 10%, uh, 90% add to 100. 95% and 5% add to 100. 99% confidence interval and 1% confidence level add to 100. So these two things mirror one another, all right? So the decision to reject the null um, is the same as using a confidence interval or a significance test, is the same For a confidence interval or a significance test. And to specify, this is a two-sided test. All right. So the results of a two-sided significance test are going to be the exact same as a confidence interval of the same level. Okay. All right. Then important ideas, okay? So these are always going to be the same for the four-step process. Excuse me, this is number 10. So for the four-step process, okay? So in the state section, You need to tell me your parameter, your hypotheses. Uh, you need to tell me your statistic and your significance level. For the plan section, you need to tell me your name of the procedure and your conditions. For the do section, you need to tell me your formulas, your test statistic, and your p-value. And your picture, so a picture of the graph. And then for the conclusion, so in the conclude section, you need to interpret p-value. and draw a conclusion. So reject or fail to reject the null. All right, and then number 11, 
Uh, this is confidence interval and two-sided test. All right, so if the null value is in the interval, That means that the null value is plausible okay so that means that you fail to reject the null now if the null value is not in the interval That means that the null value is not plausible. And so you would reject the null. Okay? So in other words, a, a blank percent confidence interval, so like a 90% confidence interval, will make the same decision as a two-sided test with a significance level of whatever the opposite is. So if you make a 90% confidence interval, that will make the same result as a two-sided test where the significance level is 10% or 0.10 because 90 and 10 make 100, right? So a C% percent, uh, confidence interval uh, will make the same decision as a significance test uh, with alpha equaling 1 minus um, C percent. Okay, so 90% confidence interval will be the same thing as a two-sided test where significance level is 0.10. 95% confidence interval will be the same thing, same results as a uh, two-sided significance test where significance level is 5% because 95 and 5 make 100. So they both give you the same thing. Um, obviously, confidence intervals don't have their own uh, hypotheses. That's what tests are for. But this is just telling you that you will need to know how to compare a two-sided test to its comparable confidence interval. Okay? So... I'm going to leave the check your understanding for you, all right? Um, in the next video, we're going to be talking about section 11.2. That'll be the last video for this uh, unit, for this chapter as well. Um, we're going to be doing 11.2, which tests about a difference in means.